Electricity is energy. It has improved our quality of life. It is a powerful force that must be treated with respect. Tremendous amounts of electricity are used in underground mining. As a mining professional, you operate and maintain some of the safest, most powerful, and technically advanced equipment in the world. You routinely work around systems with a broad range of electrical requirements. This video focuses on some of the safe work practices you should follow when working around electricity in an underground mine. Its purpose is to enhance your awareness of some potential hazards presented by this unique environment. Electrical power from the substation may enter a mine through a borehole or through the mine's drift mouth. High voltage systems vary, but typically fall within a range of 4,160 volts to 13,200 volts. The high voltage power cable, or high line, carries electricity throughout the mine and distributes it to high voltage equipment, such as vacuum breakers, belt starters, power centers, and trolley rectifiers. As you are aware, many mines transport employees, supplies, and equipment to their work areas on rail equipment powered by a DC trolley system. Some mines may use battery-powered transportation equipment for these purposes. Coal is typically produced with electrical equipment and normally conveyed to the surface by electrical equipment. While mining methods vary, electrically powered continuous miners are normally used to cut and load the coal. Shuttle cars or similar types of electrical haulage equipment are commonly used to transport coal from the face to a belt conveyor for transportation out of the mine. Long wall mining is another electrically powered method used to produce coal. In this method, a long wall shearer is used to extract the coal. As the shearer cuts the coal, it falls onto a chain conveyor. The coal is carried by the chain conveyor to a crusher and stage loader assembly, which loads it onto a belt conveyor. Other types of electrical equipment used in the mining process are roof boulders, battery powered material handling equipment, and dewatering pumps. Electrically powered equipment has many positive uses in the underground mining environment. It also introduces many potential hazards which could lead to accidents and injuries. Caution must be used when operating or repairing electrical equipment. Failure to exercise caution may result in injury. Every effort must be made to avoid electrical shock, electrical burns, and flash burns. You should also be aware that electricity can be an ignition source for mine fires and explosions. State and federal regulations, as well as company policies, have been designed to guard against electrical hazards. Even with these requirements, you cannot afford to take electricity for granted. It's a constant presence underground. Remember, regardless of the type of job you perform, all miners are exposed to potential electrical hazards. Electrical shock can occur if your body comes into contact with an electrical source and provides a path to ground. Electrical arcs or flashes occur when an energized electrical current is interrupted from its normal path. Arcs generate heat, which can cause fires. They can also cause electrical burns or eye damage. Some arcs have been measured at 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. As a miner, you work in an environment with changing and adverse conditions. Poor lighting and low height may make it more difficult to see potential hazards. You must always be aware that these conditions may impact electrical safety. An underground mine is an unpredictable environment. Falling rock may damage an electrical cable or component, causing a shock or arcing hazard. Wet conditions may corrode metal conduit or electrical connections. 
As a good conductor of electricity, mine water can cause shorting and grounding in electrical equipment. In this type of environment, it is important to stay alert to potential electrical hazards. In your job, you will encounter both AC and DC current. The most commonly used is AC or alternating current. It is used for most production and conveying equipment and some dewatering pumps. A few examples of DC or direct current equipment are battery operated machinery, trolley systems, and some dewatering pumps. In an underground mine, you will be exposed to various voltage levels. Voltage levels are defined by the Mine Safety and Health Administration. Low voltage is voltage up to and including 660 volts. Medium voltage is from 661 volts to 1000 volts. High voltage is more than 1000 volts. All of these voltage levels should be considered potentially hazardous. The most common source of electrical shock is from 110 volts, which is found in your home. Work with caution around electricity. Treat it with respect. The best way to prevent electrical accidents is to become alert and knowledgeable of the potential hazards electricity presents. Increased knowledge of basic electrical concepts may help you prevent an accident. Certain basic components are found in every electrical circuit. Every electrical circuit includes voltage, a form of electrical pressure, current, which is the flow of electricity, a conductor, a path for current to flow on, resistance, which restricts the flow of current, and an insulator, which prevents or reduces the flow of current. A bonder is a common tool used for welding in underground mines. When welding with the bonder, current will normally flow from the trolley wire through the bonder resistors to the rail. Because the bonder resistors are mounted on insulators, current will not flow to the frame of the enclosure. What happens if the wire going to the bonder becomes frayed and makes contact with the enclosure frame? A lot depends on the frame ground. If the frame ground has a good connection to the rail, most likely the fuse in the trolley nip will blow and no voltage will be on the enclosure. If the frame ground is poorly connected, some of the current may flow to the rail, but the amount may not be enough to cause the fuse to blow. In this condition, 300 volts will be on the frame of the bonder. If you touch the frame, you could provide another path for current to flow to the rail. How much current will flow through you and the rail? That will depend on how much resistance your body offers to the 300 volts. If you and your clothing are wet, you provide a good path for current to flow. If your clothes are dry and you are wearing rubber gloves and boots in good condition, you will not provide as good a path for current to flow. But remember, it doesn't take much current flowing through you to be dangerous. It only takes one-tenth of one amp to cause your death. Make sure the frame ground is properly connected to avoid potential injury. A dewatering pump is another common type of DC equipment found in an underground mine. A DC pump receives its electrical power by attaching a device called a nip to the trolley wire. The nip contains a fuse of the correct size, type, and rating for this particular application. Make certain an ID tag is attached that identifies which piece of equipment to which the nip supplies power. The power cable for the nip must be adequately insulated and fully protected. The frame ground and return wires must be attached separately to the mine track and solidly connected. Before opening or removing the cover of any electrical enclosure, the source of electrical power must be disconnected, locked, and tagged out. Let's look inside the enclosure. Notice that the cable is protected by the entrance gland. Two of the conductors are connected to components that are insulated from the frame. 
The third conductor is connected to the frame. This is the most important conductor because it provides a safe path for current to flow if the energized wire or component makes contact with the frame of the enclosure. Now let's take a look at an AC pump installation. Let's start at the circuit breaker that supplies power to the pump enclosure. Note that the circuit breaker panel is clearly identified with a brass tag as the breaker for that specific pump. The cable plug is also identified with a brass tag. Circuit breakers provide the same type of protection as fuses, but unlike fuses, they can be reset. They can also be actuated by other protective devices, such as ground fault relays and ground check circuits. Like fuses, circuit breakers provide protection in the event of electrical faults and malfunctions by preventing excessive current from entering the rest of the circuit and causing damage to components and wiring. More importantly, circuit breakers help prevent injuries to you and your coworkers. Circuit breakers used in underground mines have adjustable settings to accommodate different sizes of cable and types of equipment. They must be adjusted properly for their intended use. Do not change this setting. AC power cable connections are designed to make disconnecting and locking out the plug a simple process. They must be properly rated for their application. Always turn off the circuit breaker, disconnect and lock and tag out the cable before opening the enclosure. The frame ground for this circuit is located inside the pump enclosure. Now that we have looked at both DC and AC installations, let's look at some electrical safety requirements specified by the Federal Mine Safety and Health Administration. No electrical work shall be performed except by a qualified person. Disconnecting devices shall be locked and tagged out. All electrical equipment shall be examined, tested, properly maintained, and results recorded as required. When a potentially dangerous condition is found on electric equipment, it shall be removed from service until it is repaired. Circuit breaking devices or proper fuses shall be installed to protect against short circuit and overloads. All power circuits and electrical equipment shall be de-energized before work is performed, except for troubleshooting or testing. Circuit breakers shall be marked for identification. Trolley wires must be guarded in areas where employees may be exposed to contact. Metal components that can be energized by the failure of insulation or by contact with energized parts shall be grounded by approved methods. Where single phase 110 or 220 volt circuits feed electrical equipment, the only approved method of grounding is the connection of all metal components to a separate grounding conductor which establishes a continuous connection to a grounded center tap of the transformer. While regulations are necessary, a common sense approach to safety is the best way to prevent accidents. What should you do before starting any piece of electrical equipment? Make a visual inspection of the area and equipment to make certain no hazards exist. Check for bad top or coworkers in the immediate area. Always check for frayed or damaged cables, loose or missing bushings, missing or damaged guards or covers, exposed moving machine parts, loose or damaged components, switches working improperly, or a danger tag attached to the machine listing a problem or hazardous condition. What should you do if you find a potentially dangerous condition? Remove it from service immediately and report it to the appropriate person. If the machine or installation needs locked and tagged out, do it immediately. 
If you receive any electrical shock, no matter how slight, immediately de-energize the circuit involved. If you cannot determine which circuit is involved, do not guess. Ask for help. Immediately report the condition to the appropriate person. Do not expose yourself to additional shocks. It only takes a second for an accident to occur. Always remember, never bypass, bridge, or disable a circuit protective device. Never disconnect a frame ground connection. Always wear the proper personal protective equipment and use the proper testing devices when troubleshooting an energized electrical circuit. Never look directly at a circuit breaker when you are trying to reset it. Avoid repeated attempts to reset. A breaker that does not stay reset indicates a problem. It could explode or flash. We have looked at electrical installations and pointed out some of the items associated with a safe installation. We have reviewed certain legal requirements, policies, and procedures associated with a safe electrical installation. We have seen that all electrical installations must meet certain safety requirements, regardless of the amount or type of voltage. These items, requirements, and policies are all necessary, important, and helpful in preventing accidents. However, equally as important are your observation skills, your knowledge, and your reactions around electrical equipment. Electrical safety is your responsibility. You, the person on the job, are the best one to notice possible safety problems. Protect yourself and your coworkers from electrical accidents by always practicing safe work procedures. Treat electricity with respect. If you are uncertain about anything relating to electrical safety, do not take a chance. Ask for help. It could save your life. Thank you.